Okay, so uh, I get to pick up uh, where I left off last time. So um, this was the, the theorem I stated uh, that we have on uniqueness of the equilibrium state. And uh, last time I discussed um, you know, what, what this result's saying, uh, some of the context of it. Um, so now let me say something about, well, uh, why it's true. Um, so I, I have to uh, square the circle a little bit here of the fact that um, not everyone was here last week. Um, for those who were here last week, the ideas will be, uh, many of the ideas will be very familiar from Vaughan's talk, but I, I am aware that not everyone was here last week, so I'll try and split the difference. Uh, so let, let me say something about the um, uh, proof idea uh, of this theorem. Um, so uh, what we have to do is find uh, what we call uh, a decomposition uh, for the space of orbit segments so we're, we're always thinking in this business about pieces of orbit so not points not whole orbits segments of orbit um, so space of orbit, orbit segments you know that's x times uh, non-negative numbers so we're identifying the pair xt with, you know, the, the, the orbit, um, you know, the, the, the segment of geodesic. I, I guess I can write it like, uh, like this, right? So, um, okay. So, what, what does it mean to have a decomposition? Well, our idea is that for any orbit segment in the space, um, what we ask for is that we can chop it up as follows. So th this is some orbit segment that we don't know anything about. And what, what we're asking for, so th there's um, a general theorem uh, behind this, uh, which I'll tell you more about soon. Um, but basically the idea is that any orbit, we should be able to chop it up into uh, three segments. And the notation we use is that the first bit is going to belong to P. P, P is for prefix. Uh, the end of it is going to uh, belong to a collection that we call uh, suffixes. And the middle is going to belong to G. And, and G is invoking the rather overused word good. So th this is what we're asking for uh, from, from the orbits. Okay. Um, so uh, the basic idea of, of our approach is that you, you, ask to be able, you, you ask that you can do this for your space of orbit segments. And what you want from these three collections, P, G, and S, um, is that the stuff in the middle, G, has good properties. You see our notation was very uh, evocative, if vague. Um, so what does good properties mean? Uh, well, I'll make this more precise shortly, uh, but that's going to mean uh, some good regularity uh, of the function uh, along orbit segments in G. Uh, and we're going to ask for the specification property uh, on G. So. So what this is saying is that any orbit that we start off with, uh, we, can, we can cut it back at either end so that we're left with a good core, which has um, lots of nice properties that we would expect uh, in the uniform theory. Now, for, for those of you who were here last week, uh, this property will, will now be, be very familiar. I'll just say something about it for those who weren't. So the specification property is the ability to glue orbit segments together um, with, with a uniform transition time not depending on the length of the orbit segment. So that is to say, if I want to get from this orbit to this orbit to this orbit, maybe this one's really long, um, and you know, I fix an epsilon, which is the, the precision that I want to allow myself to do this, uh, I can find a new orbit, which follows this guy, a distance epsilon, 
you know, it's going to go away for some amount of time, picks up this guy, picks up this guy, all within scale epsilon. And, you know, if, if your system's transitive, I, I can always do this, right? So, okay, that's just transitivity. What specification? Specification is the property that these times where we, so uh, if this threshold is epsilon, specification is the property that um, these times that we spend transitioning uh, depend only on epsilon. Okay, so in particular, not on, on the length of these orbits. Um, so, you know, th this is something that, that, that one gets for uh, uniformly hyperbolic systems. This, this is bone specification property. Um, and, uh, yeah, so what we do, instead of asking that you can do this for every orbit, that, that was bone's property, we ask that, that you can just do it uh, for the orbits that we declare to be good. Um, and certainly in our setting, we do not expect to be able to you know, do this for, for any orbit segment. Um, so, you know, for example, if, if you're something that's been uh, hanging out on the interior of a flat strip, um, you know, the, the amount of extra time it's going to take you to, to escape that, that flat strip will, will certainly depend on, on, on how long you spent there, just from the flat geometry. So we certainly do not expect this to hold everywhere. Um, the, the big development that, that we, we have was figuring out, you know, to, to ask for it, um, well, not, not on a subset of the space, on a subset of the space of orbits, okay? Um, so that's what we're asking for, that, that G has all this good stuff going on. I'll say more about the regularity soon. And, you know, what, what about these, the, these other things? Well, we don't care too much about what's in P and S. Uh, all that we care about um, is that it's pressure. So, you know, the growth rate of the things in there, weighted by the function phi, grows slower than the pressure of the whole space. Uh, so, you know, that, that is to say that, that, that this stuff um, is, is small in the sense that matters to us. And um, so, Vaughan talked about, in some detail, at least in the measure of maximal entropy case, uh, how these ingredients uh, get you to uh, a unique measure of maximal entropy. Um, I won't go over that too much. Um, let, let me say something. Um, so, but Bowen's approach is to build a candidate measure of maximal entropy or equilibrium state, um, and, and he, he constructs it. He, ta he takes a bunch of orbits with the right growth rate, and he builds a thing. And then what he does is um, he makes sure that, that this candidate measure of maximal entropy ha has the Gibbs property, particularly the, the lower Gibbs bound is the one that, that matters in this analysis. Um, and he demonstrates that just by <laughs> making sure that there's enough orbits, you know, uh, in, in a uh, bone ball. So, so he just makes sure that he, ha that he has the Gibbs property uh, by hand, by construction. Um, and then the rest of his proof is showing that, that the, having the Gibbs property is enough to, to rule out uh, having any other uh, mutually singular uh, equilibrium state. Oh, there's one more ingredient, of course. The thing that you've built is a godic. Um, that's a, a similar argument. You need some kind of joint Gibbs property for that. And that's basically the story. So what do we do? So when we, when we have this set up, um, you know, we've got all these nice ingredients that Bowen had, but not in the whole space, just on this set G. And so our approach is saying that, you know, with, with a bunch of extra work and technicality, uh, you know, we can get away with just having the good properties on G uh, because ultimately, the rest of it doesn't matter, and, and we can somehow carry through Bone's approach and still get uniqueness. So that is what our approach is. Uh, so let, let me tell you how to define uh, this kind of decomposition uh, in our setting. Geodesic flow. Okay, so uh, how do we find a decomposition? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to choose a function lambda from the space to the non-negative numbers. Uh, I'm going to say something very vague, uh, which measures, in some sense, hyperbolicity. So we're in a non-uniformly hyperbolic setting. And this is just a function. And we want a couple of properties. Um, so what, what should it mean to measure hyperbolicity? Um, 
Well, I mean, a couple of basic properties that we'll certainly want is for this function to vanish uh, on the singular set. And the singular set is the, is the, the, the stuff that is kind of uh, low complexity. Yeah. Can you just remind us what the x is? Um, x, yes. Um, x in our setting is the uh, unit tangent bundle. Um, I think that was a leading question. <laughs> um, okay, so, right. And we want that if lambda is uniformly positive, I mean, you know, roughly, I want lambda uniformly positive uh, to give me uh, uniform estimates. Okay. So, what kind of function can do this for us uh, in our setting? Um, I'll just discuss the, the, the surface case. So, well, we're going to that lambda uh, over elements of the unit tangent bundle B, B uh, be the smallest curvature uh, of the horospheres um, at V. Uh, so, so there's a stable horosphere and an unstable horosphere. Uh, you know, we measure them so the curvature's uh, uh, non-negative. Um, and yeah. Uh, so let me draw. Uh, a picture, so uh, so if we have, have negative curvature, then yeah, what, what do the horospheres look like? So maybe here's, here's my V, and you know, we constructed these last time, and if you, in, in negative curvature, what you're going to see is, is horospheres like this. Uh, I guess I'll draw the uh, stables and unstables above the horospheres, and th these things have curvature, right? And that, that corresponds to, I uh, should have probably drawn this in the Poincaré disk. Um, yeah, so we, we saw the, this, this construction last time, and you know, it's the familiar picture of these things bending around like this. Um, so if we're in negative curvature, th th these things, this thing's definitely positive. We take the minimum of the curvature of this one and this one, um, and let's see what happens um, on a flat strip. So if it, this is a this is V inside a flat strip, well, what did the stable and unstables look like? Well, they they, they coincided through the flat strip. Um, then then after that they go off and do uh, whatever they do. Um, yeah. Point is that the stable vectors are the same as the unstable vectors because you go. Go forward, you stay bounded distance from V. You go backwards, you stay bounded distance from V. So that, that, that they coincide, uh, and we can see that geometrically, you know, that this piece of horosphere uh, is flat. Uh, so we've got lambda equals zero. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, I won't get into the uh, technical estimates too much. Um, But I will say that when, when lambda is positive, we get all the uniformity uh, that we want. So, um, so lambda positive indeed gives uniform estimates in uh, all kinds of sensors. Um, I mean, one thing it gives you that's very important is it gives you uh, a uniform angle uh, between the stable and the unstable. So that, that's a very important ingredient. Um, and you get the following estimates on growth of stable and unstable Jacobi fields, which is really at, at the heart of the, the analysis. Um, so, so an unstable Jacobi field grows like the, the, the integral of lambda uh, along the orbit segment. Um, and you know, analogous result for uh, a stable Jacobi field. And 
Um, if you believe this, you know, you, you, you start believing that if we have, have uniform estimates on lambda, that's going to get, give uniform estimates on, on, on growth of these, and, you know, we're going to start being uh, in business. Um, okay, so th this is uh, a function lambda that we can kind of uh, navigate by. Uh, so what, what's the decomposition? Um, well, uh, we're going to fix a threshold eta. Um, oh, I should also say one more thing uh, about these estimates, if, if you're not so familiar with the uh, Jacobi field formalism. Uh, so these estimates can be turned uh, with just a bit of work into estimates on, on distance in the stable and unstable manifolds. Um, so uh, so t t two points in the uh, stable of V, you know, which are close to V, the distance as you go forward is going to be, be contracted by, by something like, like this term here. Um, okay, so um, let's, let's define this decomposition structure. So I'm going to define P and S to be the same thing. Um, I, I can also, I so also sometimes call this thing uh, B, B eta, B for bad, I guess, uh, which is the set of orbit segments simply along which um, the, the average of lambda Um, is, is smaller than, than eta. Uh, so given an, an arbitrary orbit segment, uh, what, what, what we're going to do is just, we're going to look from the beginning and we're going to move to the maximal time so that this is true. That's what we're going to chop off from the beginning. Same procedure from the end. We go to the end of the orbit segment, we look backwards and we, we go to the maximal time so, so, so that this is true. That's where we cut. Okay. So we, we start with something arbitrary and we cut so that these averages are less than eta. Okay. What's left over? What's left over is things so that every average of lambda from either end is at least this threshold. So certainly we want the average along, along the whole thing to be, be bigger than this threshold, but actually each intermediate one calculated from here is also above the threshold. Um, so you know, why is this, this the complement of chopping off the maximal thing here? Well, okay, so, so suppose that this wasn't true, so you know, then you know, that would contradict maximality because you know, we could go up to there or something and it'd still be less than eta. Uh, so what, what do we get left uh, in the middle after we carry out this procedure? Uh, we're get, getting the collection of orbit segments. So it's at the integral from zero up to r, lambda fs of x, um, ds is greater than or equal to eta times r. Uh, let's be a little vague. Say for all initial and terminal segments. Okay. Um, okay. So that's how we we decompose uh, an orbit segment. Um, so. Uh, why does this do uh, good things for us? Um, well, first of all, let's think about the pressure estimates. I mean, I'm certainly not going to do all the details now, but I want to give you the idea. Uh, I claim that uh, we can hope that, that the pressure of P union S, you know, which is j just B, uh, is going to be something like uh, the singular set. Um, well, okay, I, I think m maybe, maybe we can believe that, um, you know, if we, we compute the pressure of B eta, oh, by the way, you know, you might be wondering, uh, what does pressure mean in this setting? Um, so I, I put all the definitions in the supplementary notes, uh, which are on the conference wiki. Um, you know, but be aware that this is a non-stationary thing. This is pressure defined for a sequence of, of orbit segments. 
So uh, what, what you're doing is looking at um, you know, the, the length t partition sums uh, for all of the points in here which are indexed by, by time t and looking at how that grows um, uh, with, with a limb soup. Um, okay, so you know, maybe we can believe that the set of orbit segments with, with this average of lambda less, less than small eta, as eta gets smaller, maybe we believe that that, that should get close uh, to the pressure uh, of the, the, the set of xt, um, you know, such that the integral is actually zero. That's exactly the argument that, that we carry out. And then maybe we believe that the pressure of the set of things uh, where the integral is actually zero of lambda uh, can be related to the pressure of the singular set. Um, now, the, the, the set of points with, with lambda zero uh, can actually be bigger than the singular set, uh, but we are able to get that estimate. So that, 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 that's, that's how this goes. So re relate this to, to the pressure of things with integral of lambda zero, not, not integral of lambda small, um, and then relate that set to the pressure of the singular set. So th th that's where we get the estimates from. And therefore, if we ask that the pressure of the singular set is less than the pressure of the whole space, uh, that uh, estimate will uh, propagate uh, to this collection here. Okay, so uh, that's good. We're chopping things off that are relatively small. Um, and how can we say something good uh, about G? Um, I, sh I should say something about the specification property. Um, the proof is basically the one that, that Vaughan presented last week in the uniform setting. So uh, the, the basic mechanism for the specification property um, is local product structure and density of unstable leaves. So um, yeah, so you kind of, and you hit it with, with some compactness, so you get some, some epsilon density of the unstable leaves. That's going to zoom you around from uh, one part of the space to another in uniform time. And th then you just have to um, kind of connect using the local product structure. Um, and uh, Vaughan did the details of that last week. Um, and we can basically carry out the same argument here. Um, lambda being uniformly positive um, at either end, which is what we have here, um, gives us uniform estimates on the local product structure at either end of the orbit. Um, we do have that the uh, unstable leaves uh, are dense in this setting, and we, we can basically just run, run the same argument. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you look at the function lambda, mm -hmm. is that true that if you take the singular set in the tension space, yes. it's a small neighborhood about this set, the lambda gives you uniformly away from uh, zero that's where you can get your segments uh, which give us um, um, let's see okay so the, the, these functions lambda can be, be quite subtle um, so yeah this yeah. Is yeah 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 and you have a singular set yes also, uh, you lift it to the yes to yes yes, yes. Yes. And then you take a small, I mean, that's where your function yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you take small. Yeah, yeah. Does yeah. that mean that outside of this neighborhood no. is uniformly bounded? No. It's not true. No. So lambda can be zero outside of the singular Yes, yes. It can be zero outside yes. of the singular set. Yes, yes, yes. That's yes. Yes. That yes. still can be zero. Yes, yes. Exactly, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a, yeah. Um, so a really good example to think about is the, to see this difference is the Gromov example um, where we had the, these two sides. Something that stays on one side for all of its life is in the singular set, but something that crosses once has lambda equals zero, but not in the singular set. Uh, on, on the, for, 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 for surfaces, um, I, I guess you can get, get the same phenomenon. Uh, uh, yeah, I have to think a, a little more to produce an example. Uh, but yeah, I, I think you know, the, the basic difference is you know, the mismatch between having one of lambda s and lambda u uh, 
zero or, or both of them. And both of them corresponds to the singular set. Uh, having one of them zero, uh, you've got lambda zero, but you're not in the singular set. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, So if, if we believe all this, then maybe we believe that, that the pressure gap uh, implies uniqueness uh, of the equilibrium state. Um, OK, so um, I, I just verified some hypotheses uh, of a theorem that you haven't seen. So uh, I think maybe the next thing to, to put this on, on the next level of rigor uh, is, is to show you uh, what I was actually verifying. So uh, here's one I did earlier. Um, OK, big reveal. <laughs> OK, so th this is, th this is the, the general theorem that, that we're checking. So uh, th this was earlier work by, by myself and Vaughan uh, giving uh, general criteria uh, for a flow to ha have a unique equilibrium state. Um, and th this is uh, making rigorous a lot of the things I was just saying in words uh, over the last uh, 15 minutes. And for those of you who were here last week saw uh, the measure of maximal entropy version of this. Um, OK, so le let me try and say some things. Well, when to send this to the top? Um, oops. And... Oh, something, I've got two boards moving now. Okay, and to the top, okay. And the front one can come here. And uh, the middle one can come down, perfect. Uh, okay, so uh, the main theorem I presented last time then uh, is an application of the theorem that's now uh, on, on the top of the board. Um, so, you know, the, the, the thing on the top of the board, of course, has no geometry in it. Um, it's just a bunch of conditions uh, to get uniqueness. And that, that's really a, a quintessential uh, beyond Bowen theorem. This is Bowen's hypothesis for a unique equilibrium state uh, weakened so that one can hope to apply them in, in settings uh, with non-uniform hyperbolicity. So, um, and then what I was just trying to describe in the last 15 minutes uh, was how to um, you know, get from the hypotheses in this BCFT theorem to verify that the hypotheses on the uh, top of the board. Um, OK, so oops. Uh, OK, maybe I'll move this one down a bit. Um, OK, so um, is that legible up there? Yeah, just about. Um, OK, so let, let me define some of the things in there. So uh, specification, what we talked about. Um, what, what about this funny expansivity condition? Uh, that's an important part of the picture. Um, so uh, we ha have some funny notation here. Uh, I think that this is um, denoting some kind of orthogonality. So th this is meant to uh, uh, denote the... Uh, pressure of obstructions to expansivity, so somehow orthogonal to expansivity. Okay, so we're asking that this is less than the pressure of the whole space. Uh, so what is this object? Um, I can define it as the soup of the uh, ergodic measures for the flow uh, of entropies plus integrals, uh, such that the measure of the non-expansive set um, equals one. Okay. Um, so, what should the non-expansive set mean in this setting? Well, it, it, in discrete time, expansivity, um, you know, two points that stay f close for all time, you know, ha have to be at the same point, right? Um, and in that setting, uh, the non-expansive set was simply, you know, the, the set of points that, 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 that stay, stay epsilon close. You know, the, the, the set of points which, which ha have a non-trivial um, set of things which stay close. Okay. Uh, but what, what about the flow case? Well, for, for, for an expansive flow, 
Um, if we define uh, you know, this kind of uh, bi-infinite bone ball, uh, the set of things that stay close maybe with less than or equal uh, for all time, uh, then expansivity for a flow uh, gives you that this is always uh, a little piece of orbit, right? So uh, something just a little further along the orbit or a little bit lagging behind it is going to satisfy this, right? Yeah, but particularly for, for you know, geodesic flow, uh, you're literally going to get the yeah, segments minus epsilon up to epsilon uh, of your, your geodesic. Um, yeah, that, that would be, be negative curvature if you're expansive. Uh, okay, so that, that's, that's something that, that is expansive. Uh, so what should the non-expansive set be? You know, at scale epsilon, uh, it's going to be, be the set of x um, such that uh, the set of points that stay close for all time um, is, is not uh, a piece of orbit. Uh, so, for example, uh, if, if you had an X in a flat strip, um, you know, you'd have things which stay near for all time, you know, which are not just on the flow segment. So, something in the flat strip would be in the non-expansive set. Um, okay. Um, and what we're asking for is that the measures we care about don't see this. Uh, measures with large enough free energy do not see this. That, that, that's what we're asking for. Entropy plus integral. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, if if entropy plus integral is is bigger than that number, uh, you know, uh, you give give zero mass to this set. Um, and in this geometric setting, uh, this set uh, is very much tied up with the singular set. And and in fact, what we end up needing to estimate. Um, is the pressure of measures which are supported on the singular set. So again, uh, we're going to get this from our entropy gap assumption. Um, okay, uh, let me say something about um, expansivity. No, about regularity. Um, okay, so what regularity do we need? Uh, we need uh, the bone property, again, just restricted to G, not, not globally. So that, that's up there. We need things that, that stay close. Of, uh, up to time t, um, you know, if, if we see how much the uh, ergodic sums uh, are different, uh, it's bounded uh, by by a constant. Okay. Um, I won't say say too much about that issue, uh, but l let's just say that. Um, you know, if, if a system is, or, or I guess a flow, we're doing flows, is, is uniformly hyperbolic, uh, then you know, it's, it's a completely standard argument uh, that, that any holder potential uh, is Bowen um, you know, everywhere, on the whole space of all the segments. Um, you know, you're just, just somehow combining some local product structure, the uniformity of the expansion contraction and, and, and the holder property uh, to, to obtain that estimate. So totally standard uh, hyperbolic dynamic stuff. Um, so how, how does this go uh, for us? Well, uh, we can prove Bowen on, on G uh, for holder functions uh, using uh, the same essential argument. So that is, is, is not too difficult. Um, oh, I deleted something that I didn't mean to delete. And, and why? Well, the thing I literally just erased, though, um, you know, on G, we have these exponential distance contraction estimates. And we can do, do just the same stuff along G. Distances are contracting exponentially. Um, so, um, you know, combine that with, with uh, hold the continuity of the potential, um, you know, the, the differences are going to be summable, and we're in business. Okay, so that is no big deal. Um, 
so I, I also wanted to tell you about um, the geometric potential. I, I'm certainly not going to tell you uh, much about that, but I think to give you the picture of what's going on, I at least have to tell you that um, uh, we can prove Bowen on G uh, for, for U, okay? So, you know, I was saying that you know, we don't know hold of regularity for this. Um, probably it's not true. Uh, although, amazingly, that there's no examples of that, but you know, we don't expect to hold a regularity. So what, what do we get by with? That this is what we get by with. We, we prove this kind of regularity just restricted to the set of good things G. How hard is that? I, that was the hardest thing we did in the paper. Um, I'm just going to say uh, this, is, this is hard. Uh, and it's, it requires a, a detailed analysis uh, of uh, the Riccati equation, which uh, for Keith I'm going to spell correctly. And I will say no more about that. <laughs> and that's how it works. Uh, Cool, so yeah, that, that's how we got uh, BCFT. Okay, so uh, I'm about to move on to uh, the next thing, which is mixing properties. So does anyone uh, have any questions about this so far? Yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. There's a follow-up to what I asked you. Okay. Sorry. Uh, if you, if you, the function lambda uh, uh -huh. can, can be zero or all set of the singularity sets, and how do you have this uh, threshold of the union suffixes that uh, union uh -huh. getting closer to the pressure. Right, right, right. Uh, let, let's see. So, um, I mean, th th this was uh, certainly work. I, I mean, okay, so, so, okay, what can we, it's okay, I can say, yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, what, what we do have is that, um, you know, if lambda equals zero, then lambda s or lambda u zero, right? The stable, the unstable. Uh, but we do have some monotonicity. As soon as lambda s becomes zero, it vanishes for all forwards time, and likewise for you in backwards time. And uh, you know, we can exploit this kind of argument uh, to show that if lambda equals zero, uh, then the geodesic must be asymptoting to the singular set in either forward or backward time. That's the main property we use. And then we start arguing with, with measures. Um, so a measure with, which integrates lambda to zero must be supported on the singular set. Uh, using you know, some kind of you know, contradicting Poincaré recurrence and using the property that, that, that I just said. And that's where it comes from. Yeah. yeah so if you've got anything that's forward and backwards with current, yeah. then that's where it can be zero. Right. Then it is zero. Right. Right. So yeah, that's a big point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So. Let me talk about mixing properties. I have 10 minutes, so I will state the results and I will explain what's behind it in my final lecture on Thursday. Okay, so let me talk about the uh, K property. Um, okay, so um, I, I, I was taught at some point in time that uh, a first rule of public speaking is to, uh, uh, you know, to, to try to make some kind of joke at the beginning or, or at least try to tell the audience uh, something amusing. Uh, my, my, my joke fell completely flat yesterday, uh, which might have marked the end of my career as a stand-up comedian if, if this goes out on YouTube. Uh, so in, I, I won't do any jokes, but I will tell you something amusing. Uh, so. Uh, most people think that the K property stands for Kolmogorov, and people use the word K and Kolmogorov interchangeably. Uh, a, a, a little uh, historical tidbit that my uh, graduate student, Ben Cool told me, 
uh, is that K does not actually stand for Kolmogorov. It stands for quasi-regular, uh, which begins with the letter K in Russian. So Kolmogorov K property, K is not Kolmogorov, it's quasi-regular. So. <laughs> um. <laughs> So my, my student, Ben, uh, put this historical facts in his uh, candidacy, candidacy documents and said this at the beginning of his candidacy exam. Uh, Vitaly Bergelson was uh, one of the panelists. He liked this historical linguistic fact very much. And uh, once he announced this, the candidacy was passed already. Everyone could relax. <laughs> um, OK, so I, I have a, a 10 minute warning. And that is uh, completely fine. OK, so uh, what's, what's the result? Um, so this is joint work with my, my student, uh, Ben Call. So uh, same setting as before. So why don't I just write that? So uh, same setting as BFT. Same, same hypotheses as BFT. Once I write out the pressure gap again, just to be emphatic, if we have the pressure gap, uh, then the unique uh, equilibrium state provided by BCFT um, has the Kolmogorov K property. Um, so, you know, the, the K property is thought of uh, as, as a very strong mixing property. Um, so uh, a couple of the things that, that we get out of this. Uh, so yeah, we get a mixing of all orders. Um, and positive entropy. Um, uh, Okay, so uh, in, in the two-dimensional case, so, so for surfaces, um, you know, the, the, the equilibrium state is already known to be uh, Bernoulli. Uh, that was by an application of, uh, of, of the very nice recent work by Le Drapier, Lima, and Sarig, you know, relying in turn on, on the countable state symbolic dynamics for three-dimensional flows uh, provided by, by Lima and Sarig. So, Serious, serious business and beautiful work, and that gives Bernoulli for surfaces. But those techniques are currently very much for three-dimensional flows. And as, as far as I know, there isn't, uh, yeah, th that's just where it is right now. In higher dimensions, however, this is a new result, even for the bone margulis measure. Uh, for the bone margulis measure, mixing was proved by, by Babio. Um, but yeah, the, the K property is entirely new in high dimensions, for example, for the Gromov example. Um, and yeah, of course, this applies for equilibrium states uh, beyond uh, Bone Margulis. Um, so let me, so I guess in my, my, my remaining not so many minutes, uh, I should uh, define the K property. Um, board two, getting better at this. and say something about this. Um, board one. Okay. I'm guessing better at this. Okay. Uh, okay, um, yeah, so the, the, the mixing hierarchy um, goes uh, something like this. Um, so, you know, the, the, the best thing that one ever wants is, is Bernoulli, which implies K, implies mixing of all orders. Uh, 
uh, implies mixing, uh, implies weak mixing, uh, implies a godic. Um, you know, this is an express train version of the mixing hierarchy, but there's plenty of other stops along the way. If one uh, is interested in that, partial mixing, mild mixing, light mixing, very weak Bernoulli. I guess there must be a weak Bernoulli. <laughs> um, all kinds of things, but th these are some, some of the main stops. Uh, and of course, in abstract ergodic theory, um, you know, th th there's counterexamples you know, to, to show that you can't go the other way. Well, except here, where the it's not known if these are the same thing, uh, but everywhere else that there's certainly examples of, for example, K, uh, but not Bernoulli. Um, oh, let me define K. Um, you know, it has, it has a bunch of uh, equivalent definitions. Um, you know, but since, since we're doing kind of uh, entropy theory, I'll give you the uh, entropic definition of it. Um, any non-trivial partition Uh, has positive entropy. Okay. I.e., H mu computed with respect to a partition is positive for all partitions not equal mod zero to uh, the trivial one. Um, and yeah, th th there's a couple of other equivalent definitions that are completely different. Uh, was a hallmark of a good good property, right? Uh, but th this is one that is uh, easy to understand if you're into entropy theory. Um, okay, um, so th this is the property that, that we're going to get. Um, okay, so let, let, let me let me say one more thing. So you know, th despite this being you know a kind of one directional thing in general, uh, often in, in smooth dynamics, um, you know, it, it, it's. Uh, uh, well-known and, and classic strategy uh, to try and go up the mixing hierarchy. So when you have lots of foliation structure around, lots of local product structure, uh, you, can, you can try and go up. Um, you know, that's exactly what Ornstein and Weiss did to show that geodesic flows are, are Bernoullian in the negative curvature case. Uh, that's what uh, Pessin did in, in his wonderful far-reaching generalization, um, you know, getting the Bernoulli property for the uh, Louisville measure restricted to the regular set in this setting. Um, so, okay, so we got to K. We can hope to get to here. Um, that is exactly uh, what we do. Uh, so theorem 2.1, call on myself. Uh, I'm going to announce that the unique MME uh, is Bernoulli. And this is this is based on uh, mining the classic literature for a proof that um, you know if you have product structure for the measure, then K implies Bernoulli. Um, now the classic literature is serious stuff. So uh, even though uh, uh, experts. Uh, such as Yasha and Ali uh, will say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you want to go in there and uh, extract uh, a statement you can quote, you know, you have to work and go through it. It's great having graduate students. Ben's been doing that. <laughs> um, so yeah, w w once you have uh, some, some statements of this, uh, all that remains is getting the local product structure. So uh, for, for this, of course, we, we get that from the Patterson-Sullivan construction. So we're in business. We get all the way up to Bernoulli. Um, we, 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 we are spending a bit more time to try and get Bernoulli for all the equilibrium states treated here, which is just a matter of getting the local product structure. Uh, so we're hoping to announce that later this summer, uh, but a bit early to announce it now, but th that's what we're expecting to happen. We'll see. Um, cool, so th th that's, that's our, our results uh, on, on mixing. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is to talk about uh, the, the, the tools behind this. Um, all, all I'll say now to wrap up is that um, uh, the uh, main thing that, that is driving all of this uh, is a uh, rediscovery, rediscovery that, that we made of a wonderful uh, hidden gem in the literature uh, by, by Francois Le Drapier. Um, it's, 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 it's a beautiful and, in fact, not too difficult, but just very elegant connection between thermodynamic formalism uh, and, and the K property. Um, so, 
that this appeared in, um, uh, so it's a 1977 paper, and it, it's appeared in the, the conference proceedings uh, of, of the famous uh, Dynamical Systems Conference in Warsaw in 1977. So that, that's published in the uh, Asterisk series. So one can probably uh, buy that edition uh, at this facility. Um, so, uh, yeah, so um, th that paper had not received much attention. I think it's fair to say. I, I checked uh, MathSciNet recently, and uh, of course, with, with Francois's prolific outputs, I think he has upwards of 1,600 references for his body of work. That paper has three references, and all of them appeared in the last two years. So this is just, just some hidden gold in the literature uh, which we were lucky to find out about, and we've been able to tap into Francois's uh, insight. Um, and yeah, that, that's, that's the main thing that's going to be behind this. Uh, I'll tell you more about the statement next time and how we verify it. And I'll stop there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> OK, so questions? Comments? Maybe by Francois. <laughs> okay, so it seems everything was really clear. Yeah. So thanks, thanks again. Okay. <laughs>